السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد إن شاء الله we'll talk about uh, the ayah in سورة البقرة 283 283 and in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions and if you are on a journey and cannot find a scribe then a security de- deposit should be taken and if one of you entrusts another then let him who is entrusted discharge his trust faithfully and let him fear Allah his Lord, and don't conceal testimony, for whoever conceals it, his heart is indeed sinful, and Allah is knowing of what you do. Uh, brothers, sisters, we are talking about the last, uh, sorry, uh, the ayah, which is called Ayatul Rahan, which is called Ayatul Rahan after the, uh, the verse of death. Because what we mentioned last last week that uh, if you take a loan from someone, or if you uh, if you buy something from a friend, okay, or from a person, and you will not give him the money now, you will take your item and you will give him the money after, for example, one month, one one year, whatever. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told us to write. And also Allah mentioned the two witnesses. Tayyib. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and we mentioned the rules last week. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that, and if you are on a journey and cannot find a scribe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ عَلَى سَفْرٍ There is no person to write for us. I don't know. Writing and also you don't know writing, and also the, the other people who are with us don't know writing. Okay, how can we, uh, uh, yani, prove this transaction? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "وَإِن كُنْتُمْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ وَلَمْ تَجِدُوا كَاتِبًا فَرِهَانٌ مَقْبُوضَةٌ." And if you are on a journey and cannot find a scribe, then a security deposit should be taken. A rihan. Or it is called a rahan. Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, rihan. Okay, or we call it a rahan. What is the meaning of rah? I take money from you. How to... Uh, or يعني, I, I buy something from you. I bought this book. How much this book? Okay, 10 KD. So I, I, I bought this book. And I, I told you, okay, next week I will give you the money. Okay, let's write. Well, I, I don't know how to write. Also, you don't know how to write. Or no place to write. We don't have paper. We don't have ink. We don't have pen. Nothing. So... What can I do? I said, okay, I'll take this book now. I buy this book, طيب, and keep this book, طيب, or keep the other book as a rahan, as a rahan, which is called the security deposit. So next week, طيب, I will give you your money. If I don't give you uh, your money, for example, I said, well, I, I don't have money, خلاص. You can use this darahan, uh, the security deposit. Okay, you sell it, and you take your money. Then you give me the the uh, what remains. Okay, so for example, your money is ten kd. So I sell, uh, you sell this book or this item, twenty kd. You take ten kd, your money, and all you then you give me the other ten kd. Tayyib. 
So, uh, yeah, brothers and sisters, what do, you, what do you notice? You must, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make the others uh, feel, feel good. Not to be, um, yeah, imagine if I uh, take you, if I bought, bought this book from you or this item and I told you, okay, next week or next year I'll give you your money. All the time you'll think, will I get my money or not? He will cheat me, he will escape, he will die. Okay, subhanallah, you will think many things that you will lose your money. But imagine if I keep something as a rahan, security deposit. You will feel, you will be comfortable. Okay, if he, did not give, if he doesn't give me my money, خلاص, I have something. Alhamdulillah. طيب. So if you notice that the Sharia wants this, the society to be in, to live in peace. طيب. Here, brothers and sisters, if you notice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, and if you are on a, on a journey. طيب. Uh, so if you read this ayah, you alone, I mean this ayah alone, you understand that the rules of rahan or rihan, I mean the security deposit, this is only if you are in a journey for the travelers. But if you are in your city, this is not allowed. But the scholar said, also if you are in your city, you can use the, uh, the, con the concept of uh, rihan, the security deposit. Why? Because when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, Okay, or before before his death, he also did that with the Jew. He he bought a, a food from a Jew. Then he uh, the Prophet I said, did not give him the money, but he uh, يعني, later he will give him the money, and he kept uh, something as a security deposit. So even it is allowed in your country. We live, for example, here in Kuwait. We can use the rahan. We can use rahan. Sorry. Then a security deposit should be taken. And if one of you entrusts another, then let him who is entrusted discharge his trust faithfully and let him fear Allah, his Lord. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنْ أَمِنَ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا فَلْيُؤَدِّ اللَّهِ يُؤْتُوا مِنْ أَمَانَةَ وَلِتَّقِ اللَّهَ رَبَّهِ So, if you trust him, طيب, so no need for this deposit, this security deposit, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Then he said, وَلِيَتَّقِ اللَّهَ رَبَّهِ Let him fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يعني, uh, we don't know how to write. No witnesses. Okay, and we will not give the rahan, the security deposit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, فَلْيَتَّقِ اللَّهَ رَبَّهِ Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because nothing proves that you took something from him. I mean, sorry, nothing proves that uh, you did not pay him. You can claim that I paid him. And no proof for that or for the opposite. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds you, فَلْيَتَّقِ اللَّهَ رَبَّهِ And if you remember, brothers and sisters, that when you spoke about the verses of divorce, Allah mentioned the concept of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taqwa Allah, this concept many times. Also in Surah Talaq, Allah mentioned the fear of Allah. Uh, if you notice, brothers and sisters, uh, يعني, during the problems, the husband-wife problems, okay, how can you prove, how can you prove uh, that you gave your wife or you did not give. For the wife, how can she prove that my, my husband is beating me or not? Okay? You don't know how, how to prove that. It is very difficult. Okay? Yes, يعني, uh, maybe some people say, no, I can't prove that. I can't prove that I can do, I can transfer every month a money to move my wife. And this is a proof that I am giving my, my wife money. Of course, not everyone is doing that. And also, يعني, uh, يعني, uh, it, it looks bad. Why? 
sometimes it looks bad. Why? Because as if there is no trust. What is the meaning that I, I transfer? Yani if my, my wife asks me for money, no, I will not give cash. I will transfer. خلاص. I transfer money to you, then you, you, you go to the ATM card and withdraw the money. Okay, يعني not good sometimes. طيب. And also, uh, uh, if uh, my wife goes to the market, I okay, give me the fatura, give me the bills for every, the checks for everything. Also, this is not not good. Okay, for many people, I mean, difficult to prove to prove what what happens uh, at home. So that's why the fear of, of Allah subhanahu wa taala is very important. The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very important, brothers and sisters. So he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa liyattaqillaha rabbah. Then he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa la taktumu shahada. And don't conceal testimony. You attended the transaction. Then they need you. They need your witness. Or you, they need you to be a witness. You should go. Don't say, no, 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 no. I will not attend. No, no. Uh, please don't call me. When people need you for your shahada, for your testimony, don't refuse. Because if you don't come, some people will lose their money. Some rights will be lost. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَكْتُمُ الشَّهَادَةِ وَمَنْ يَكْتُمْهَا فَإِنَّهُ آثِمٌ قَلْبُهُ طيب الله سبحانه وتعالى said uh, the one who de- conceals the one uh, who conceals it his heart is indeed sinful it means this is, this is a sin it is haram you should answer them go and tell what you saw then Allah سبحانه وتعالى said والله بما تعملون عليم and Allah is knowing of what you do. If you deny, Allah knows. No, I do not take money from him. Already I paid him everything. Okay? You are lying. Allah knows. Even if you deny, even if you say, Wallahi, if you swear by Allah, Allah knows what is that fact. So fear Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. Everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't own anything. What we own, what is with us, actually it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even I don't own myself, my soul, my family. Everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوا يُحَاسِبُكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ Whatever you show, sorry, whether you show what is within yourselves or conceal it, Allah will bring you to account for it. I am now talking. So, but what is inside my heart, you don't know. You know, you can hear what I'm saying. But you don't know what I'm concealing. When tubdu ma fi anfusikum, aw tukhfu yuhasibukum bihillah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَدِّمُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then he will forgive whom he wills and punish whom he wills. And Allah is over all things uh, component. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah, okay, the companions went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Why? Because it is not an easy. Allah, the Prophet sallallahu, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala said, the companions 
say to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yani, oh Rasulullah, Allah told us to pray to to do this. Allah told us to to fight the kuffar jihad. We did everything, no problem. We pay our money for charity. We pray five prayers. We fast Ramadan. We fight the kuffar, no problem. But something came, we cannot. They mean this ayah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Are you going to say like the people of the book? Are you going to say exactly what they said before you? What they, what they said? سَمِعْنَا وَعَصَيْنَا If you remember we mentioned وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَعَصَيْنَا وَأُشْرِبُوا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ الْعِجْلَ بِكُفْرِهِمْ They said, we listen and we disobey. So you want to say the same? You should say سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ the companion said, خلاص. They said, what Allah, what, sorry, what the Prophet ﷺ told them. They said, we listen and obey. We ask you, O oh Allah, forgiveness. غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير. And we'll go back to you. So, when they said that, وذلت بها لسنتهم. They, يعني, uh, they, they said, oh, Rasulullah, this is difficult for us. That even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put in account what we think about without saying it, without doing it. This is difficult. Why? Because we cannot control our thoughts. Okay, يعني, sometimes we cannot control our thoughts. Subhanallah, we think about a bad, bad thing. We think about doing haram. Yeah, maybe I'm sitting like, like that, maybe I'm reading Quran, I'm listening to the lecture. Okay, maybe while doing something, while saying something, I'm thinking to, to do the haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that revealed, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليه ما كسبت Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed the next ayah, or sorry, the last ayah, Allah doesn't charge a soul except with what with that within its capacity. So this is not in your capacity, خلاص, don't worry. And as the Prophet وسلم, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not account what is what is called hadith al nafs. What does it mean hadith al nafs? That you are telling yourself something. You are not saying that. You are not doing that. Then there is no problem. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "وَإِنْ تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنْفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبُكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهُ فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَعِدْلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ." Okay. So uh, some scholars said this ayah mansukha. The rules, the rule of this ayah cancelled. Yani, when Allah revealed this ayah, it means that whatever you do, you say, or you conceal inside yourself, it will be an account. Allah will account that. Allah will reward you or, or Allah will punish you. It depends. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah said, it means don't worry. If you are not saying that, if you are not doing that, we will not punish you. Uh, so this is verse 284. The verse 285, Allah says, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِرَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَةِ وَكُتُبِ رَسُولُ The Messenger has believed in what was revealed to him from his Lord. And so have the believers. And the scholar said, this is a very nice, why? Very nice way. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Prophet وسلم, and also the believers. Allah mentioned the Prophet وسلم, and also the believers. Yani Allah is pra- praising the believers. Why? Because he mentioned them with the Prophet وسلم. It is an honor for us. I mean for the believers. 
The messenger has believed in what was revealed to him from his Lord. And so have the believers. All of them have believed. What, what is the meaning of Iman? Has believed in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La nufarriq bayna ahadim rusulih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here, saying, we make no distinct, distinction between any of his messengers. If you remember, before Ayatul Kursi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Tilka rusul faddalna ba'dahum ala ba'd. If you remember, Ayat Kursi verse, uh, be, sorry, before Ayatul Kursi, Verse number uh, 250, uh, 253, those messengers, some of them we caused to exceed others. So what do you understand from this ayah, from this verse, I mean 253, that they are not at the same level. And in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we make no distinction between any of his messengers. Okay, so what is the meaning of that? It means if you come to the point of Iman, okay, all of them the same. I believe in Musa, in Muhammad, Isa, Dawood, Sulaiman, Yunus, Yahya, Zakaria, Adam. So I believe in all of them. All of them in this point the same. What do I mean? I believe in Muhammad as a messenger. Yes. Alayhi salatu wassalam. I believe in, <coughs> in Isa as a messenger. Yes. All of them the same. I believe in all the prophets and messengers. Not like the Jews. They believe that Musa is a messenger. Yusha is a messenger. Harun is a messenger. But Isa no. Jesus no. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam no. Okay, so they differentiate between them. They believe in some of the messengers and they disbelieve in others. But for us, we believe in all of them. They are the same in this point. Okay, and what about, this is the, the meaning of this ayah. What, is, what about the previous ayah in, in uh, 253? Okay, it means that, yes, we believe in all the messengers, but the messengers are not at the same level. Okay, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the best. Okay, Ibrahim is better than Isa. Musa is better than Yahya. Okay, so they are not at the same level. يعني, uh, the hadith of Isra al-Mi'raj, the night journey, the Prophet ﷺ went up. And he saw in the seven heavens, eight prophets. Adam, uh, Yahya wa Isa, uh, Yusuf, Idris, Harun, Musa, and Ibrahim. Not at the same level. One is higher than the other. And the, high, the highest one of them, Ibrahim. والسلام, then the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, went above them. Okay? So we believe and we love all of them. But also we should believe that they are not at the same level. Some are better than the others. All of them the best. Okay? But some of, uh, uh, are above and higher than the others. So this is the meaning of the ayah, of the ayah there. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, we make no distinction between any of his messengers. And they say, we hear and we, we obey. So this is the big difference between the Muslims and the Jews. The Jews said, سَمِعْنَا وَعَصَيْنَا We hear and we disobey. But the Muslims say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا so this is very important, brothers and sisters. Our way should be to say, Inshallah, Hadr, yes. Don't say no for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Don't say, okay, I will do that, but you should explain me. I will not obey you until you explain me. I will not do this rule until I understand why. This is not the way of the believers. The, be the believers... You see, Hadr. Okay, I will do it. Then, if there is something to, to be explained, okay, I will ask for that. 
But the main thing, I should obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This should be the way of the believers, brothers and sisters. We should not ask Allah why. We should not ask the Prophet sallallahu why. Our job is to follow, to obey. If you ask why, why or later I will not do that, this is not the correct way. <coughs> this is not the correct way. Taib. وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَاطَعْنَا Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we seek your, uh, Allah mentioned about them, we seek for your forgiveness, our Lord, and to you is the final destination. غُفْرَانَكْ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ Even if we, we claim, oh, sorry, even if we declare that we believe in Allah, we hear and obey, also we need the forgiveness. If you are a good Muslim, you need the forgiveness. Don't think that, no, I am worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no need for me to ask maghfirah. No, I don't have any sin. We have a lot of sins. So that's why we, keep, we should keep asking maghfirah. Allah maghfir li, Allah marhamni. Okay, immediately after the salah we say, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Immediately after the salah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to say istighfar in every meeting. 70 times, uh, more than 70 times. We need istighfar. طيب. غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير. طيب. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, and to you is the final destination. If you notice, brothers and sisters, he, uh, يعني, uh, the, the believers mention ربنا. So you, uh, you invoke Allah by his name, Rabbana. Okay, a Rabb is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Rabb is one of the names of Allah. So this is uh, uh, one of the ways of the believers that when you invoke Allah, use his names subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. The last ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah doesn't charge a soul except with that within its capacity. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish you if you cannot. But for the things that you can, so you can't do this. So why are you not doing this? Be careful. For example, the salah. In the salah, I mean in the first salah, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, we have to stand up. وَقُومُ لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ Allahu Akbar. طيب. So if you sit down and you pray, this is haram, not allowed. Why? Because you have to stand up. The Prophet ﷺ said, Salli qa'iman. Pray while standing. Position, in a standing position. If you say, Wallahi, I cannot. I have pain. Bro- broken leg. Okay? Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Salli qa'iman. If you cannot, sit down. If you cannot, lie down. As simple as that. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. So, يعني brother, sister, this is very important for the believers, for the Muslims, for the human beings. We should know that if there is something you cannot do, Allah will not punish you. If something it is not within your capacity, Allah will not punish you. So if you, tell, if, you, if you are telling your son to pray and he is not praying, Allah will not punish you. If you are doing your duty toward, toward your family and they are not listening to you, they are not following the haq, the right, Allah will not punish you. One sister asked me, يعني, uh, uh, Sheikh, I am doing my job toward my parents, but they are not listening to me. They are uh, behaving very in a bad way. They are sh- my father is beating me, my, the, my mother is shouting me, and okay. So this sister is very bad, uh, sorry, uh, يعني, very sad. If my parents are not pleased with me, then of course Allah is not uh, pleased with me. I told the sister, يعني, if you are doing your job, خلاص. don't care about uh, your parents. You are serving your parents. 
you are obeying your parents, but they are uh, dealing with you in a bad way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish you if they are not pleased with you. Allah will be angry on me if, if I make my parents angry. Okay? If I'm not obeying them, if I'm not serving them, but I'm doing everything for them. But they don't, they hate me. They are not pleased, they are not happy with me. This is their problem, not my problem. So don't be depressed because the people are not happy with you. If you are doing your job. If you are doing your job. Okay? لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَسَلْ لَوْ أَسْعَى لَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهِ مَا كَسَبَتْ طيب it will have then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it will have the consequence of what good it has gained and it will bear the consequence of what evil it has earned if you do good you will find the good if you do bad you find the bad as simple as that I pray, I give charity, I fast, I do hajj, okay? I help the, the people. I will find this at the day of judgment. You will find the reward. You, you disobey your parents, you uh, fight people, you cheat people, and you ignore the salad, okay? You will find the sins at the day of judgment. So what you will face at the day of judgment? Your deeds. If your, deeds <coughs> if your deeds are good, if your deeds are good, then you will get the reward. Your deeds are bad, the punishment and the sins. This is justice. Justice. لا ما كسبت وعلى ما اكتسبت. Okay. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the believers, ربنا, they say, ربنا تواخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا. Our Lord, don't impose blame upon us if we have forgotten or erred. Our Lord, and lay not upon us a burden like that which you laid upon those before us. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا. I forgot. Okay. يعني uh, for example, in Ramadan, by, by mistake, they, oh, sorry, after the Fajr prayer, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, you drank water. Then you remember, ah, I'm fasting. What should you do? You continue. Why? Because you forgot. Allah will not punish you. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا. So this is a dua from the believers. Okay, uh, our Lord, don't impose blame upon us if we have forgotten, or we do we do something by mistake. أو أخطأنا. Allah will not punish you if you do something by mistake. Okay, by mistake you uh, yeah you you did something. Allah will not punish you because this is by mistake. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana atu akhidna nisiyan akhtar. Rabbana, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and <coughs> our Lord and lay not upon us a burden like that which you laid upon those before us. Rabbana atu akhidna nisiyan akhtar. 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 Rabbana Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the people before us. Okay? Uh, the people before us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put some restrictions as a punishment. Okay? Yani, uh, in surah, sorry. Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ هَادُوا حَرَّمْنَا كُلَّ ذِي ظُفُرْ 
بسورة الأنعام الله mentioned that he, he made it حرام forbidden on the, the Jew هادو على الذين هادو كل ذي ظفر it is not allowed to eat what, what has nails okay. ومن البغر والغنم حرمنا عليهم شحوم شحومهما and also it is not allowed to eat the fat of the cows of the sheep except what what is in the bags or الحوايا uh, ومختلط بالعظم what is with the, what comes with the uh, bones this is very difficult how can you take the fat uh, from uh, the fat tissue from the bones and it is very difficult why because their sins because they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah made it difficult for them so we are asking Allah the believers are asking Allah oh Allah don't make this for us ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا طيب then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به okay after that our Lord and burden us not with that which we have no ability to be, to bear we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't put any pressure on us if we cannot Allah can ask us to do the difficult things but in Islam it is the opposite if there is something difficult خلاص. no need to do it it is difficult to pray in the masjid because uh, wallahi, because rain or because anything else خلاص. pray at home you cannot fast because you have a disease don't fast you are a traveler you join the salah you shorten the salah alhamdulillah Allah can make it difficult for us Allah can tell us you have to pray on time always you are a traveler or not a traveler you should not shorten the salah you have to pray on time and the full salah Allah can tell us there is no joining, no combining the salah. You have to pray all the salah on time. It will be difficult for us. Subhanallah. But Allah made our deen, our religion easy. As the Prophet sallallahu said, بُعِثْتُ بِالْحَنِفِيَةِ السَّمْحَةِ I was sent by... حَنِفِيَةِ السَّمْحَةِ What is حَنِفِيَةِ السَّمْحَةِ? The easy religion. <coughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ربنا uh, and lay not our Lord and lay not upon us a burden like that which you laid upon the, uh, those before us our Lord and burden us not with that which we have no ability to bear and, bar- and pardon us and forgive us and have mercy upon us what is the meaning of that? Wa'fu anna. Wa'fu lana. Warhamna. Al afu means to, to erase. Okay? Yani if there is, uh, for example, there is something, there is dirt here. Okay? What is meaning of afu? I erase it. So when you look at the table, no dirt. There is tea. So I erased, I wipe the tea. Then when you come, you don't see the tea. Why? Because I removed it. This is afu. Wa'fu an wa'khfir lana. What is maghfir lana? Min al-maghfira. Al-maghfira, if there is dirt, I cover this dirt. Khalas, you cannot see the dirt here. If there is a wound here, you put a plaster. You cover it. This is called maghfira. When you cover, then people cannot see the, your sin. Warhamna. To have mercy on us. So how? If you have, if, oh Allah, if you have your mercy on us, you then we will not do sins. We will not do the mistakes. Warhamna. Then, أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين <coughs> sorry you are our protector so give us victory over the disbelieving people <coughs> so 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, mentioned about the believers, Anta Mawlana, Fansurna ala al-qawmi al-kafirin. Tayyib, you are our Mawla. What does it mean about Mawla? Uh, our protector. The one who controls our things. The one who guides us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Kuffar said in Ghazwat Badr, sorry, in Ghazwat Uhud, the Battle of Uhud, Abu, Abu Sufyan was the leader of the Kuffar that time, before his Islam. Later he became Muslim. So after the battle, Abu Sufyan said, Lana al Uzza wa la Uzza lakum. Abu Sufyan said, Lana al Uzza. Al Uzza is one of the idols, and you don't have Uzza. The Prophet said to the companions, Why you are not answering him? Answer uh, Abu Sufyan. You should reply, Oh Rasulullah, what should we say? The companion said, What should we say? We will say. You tell us and we will say. The Prophet said, You should answer him, Allah Mawlana. Wala Mawla lakum. Allah is our Mawla. He is our protector. And no one to protect you. That your idols will not protect you. Where are the idols of the people of Nuh, the people of Hud, the people of Saleh? They were worshipping the idols. When Allah sent the punishment, the idols did not protect the people of Nuh. The idols did not protect the Kuffar. The idols, the 360 idols surrounding the Kaaba did not protect Quraysh, did not protect Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, uh, uh, Umayyah ibn Khalaf and the others. Subhanallah. So, uh, the believers say in the, their dua, Anta Mawlana, you are our protector. Okay, so who is our protector? The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the kuffar. We should, we should separate ourselves from the kuffar. It should be clear that the, the, the group of the believers and the group of the kuffar. That's why the Prophet sallallahu said, يعني, it is forbidden to uh, ليس, uh, يعني, uh, not uh, one, one of us who is not allowed to, to be with them. ليس منا من قام بين ظهراني المشركين. Those who live with the mushrikeen, they should not do that. Yes, there, of course, they, يعني, sorry, يعني, this is, يعني, general, yes, there are rules, okay, those who embrace Islam in non-Muslim country and they cannot make hijra and they cannot, okay, different rules, but I mean generally, the Muslim should be with Muslims, he should not mix with the non-Muslims, خلاص, if you want to protect your deen, stay away from the kuffar, don't be with them, if you have the chance, Go and live with the Muslims. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is our protector. Allah Mawlana. Then at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, So give us victory over the disbelieving people. The victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. خلاص, the, uh, the situation, always, there is fight between Muslims and non-Muslims. I mean Muslims and the Kuffar. For Surah Al-Qawm Al-Kafirin. Yani also brothers, sisters, uh, there is no problem when you say Kuffar. It is part of our deen. Because uh, we notice that some Muslims avoid saying the word Kafir. They don't like to say the word Kafir, Mushrik. So they say, نحن والآخر Okay, the others Or they say the non-Muslim They don't like to say kafir They don't, they don't like to say mushrik you, you should say that, why? Because it is mentioned in the Quran لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل كتاب والمشركين Here at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah Allah said فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين so, brothers and sisters, there is no problem if you... Uh, we have to use the word Mushrik Kafir as it came in the Quran and Sunnah. Okay, some Muslims don't like to, to hear or to say or to read the word Kafir, Mushrik. 
It is there in the Quran and Sunnah. So we have to use them. As they came in the Quran and Sunnah. Of course, we should not use them in the wrong way. Right? But we should, we, use, we should use them in the correct way. As they came in the Quran and Sunnah. <coughs> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that if you recite the last two ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليهم ربي والمؤمنون. If you recite these two ayah, the last two ayah, the last two verses of Surah Baqarah, in one night, kafata, they are enough for him. They are sufficient. They will suffice him. What is the meaning of that? As the Nawawi رحمه الله mentioned, uh, it means that it is enough for Qiyam al-Layl. If you don't pray Qiyamul Layl and you recite these two verses, this is enough. Khalas. Uh, the scholars mention another meaning that if you read these two verses at night, kafata khalas. Allah will protect him from the evil things, from the shaitan, from the insects, from the animals, from the human beings, from the devils. Allah will protect him. Kafata. Allah will protect him. Okay? So the scholars mention, uh, as Nawawi, rahimahullah, mentioned these two meanings. طيب. And if you notice, brothers and sisters, the Prophet وسلم, said, في ليلة, at night. And the night starts from the sunset. So after you hear Maghrib Adan, I mean after the sunset, you can recite these two ayah. Because some people uh, think that when I go to bed. You can't say that when you go to bed. You can't say that before that. You can say that immediately after Maghrib. Immediately after Maghrib. Tayyip. And uh, <coughs> also there is hadith that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that if you recite these two ayat, the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, three nights in a house, where is the hadith? Yes. The shaitan will not approach you you recite this ayah to, uh, these two verses tonight tomorrow and also after tomorrow three nights shaitan will not approach your house subhanallah very powerful two verses and also there is hadith about this ayat that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayat the believers said رب يعني they are invoking Allah ربنا 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 Allah سبحانه وتعالى said قد فعلت قد فعلت I did I did okay so Allah answered the believers in their uh, supplication and also some of the hadith important for this topic Some companions asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Rasulullah, we find something in our in ourselves. We don't say that. Okay? We find something. Yeah, it means we, we, we say something inside ourselves, not in our tongues. Okay? We but yeah, uh, we not pronounce, we'll not utter anything. Because we believe this is wrong. Okay? So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَقَدْ وَجَدْتُمُوهُ Really? يعني you, you believe this is wrong, and it comes in your mind, but you don't declare this because you, you believe this is wrong? Is it really? They said, yes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, ذَلِكَ صَرِيحُ الْإِيمَانِ This is a clear sign of your faith. That you believe that something wrong, but you don't declare it. And you are afraid to say it. Not as a hypocrisy. No, but because you be, the shaitan is bringing this kind of thought to your mind. And you hide it. And you fight this thought. This is a sign of iman. Uh, also, some of the hadith <coughs> related this ayat. The Prophet ﷺ said, Hadith Sahih Muslim, Inna Allah tajawaz li ummati ma haddathat bihi anfusaha. ما لم يتكلموا أو أو يعملوا الله سبحانه وتعالى will not account you my أمة my nation what 
about the thoughts until they say or they do. I'm thinking, there is something in my mind. Okay, many things wrong, haram. Okay, but Allah will not punish me, Allah will not put sins until I say or I do. Okay, so be careful, brothers and sisters, be careful. Okay, don't say, don't do anything until you are sure this is correct. But about the wrong thoughts, Allah will not account you. And this is normal. Wrong thoughts come to your mind, so you should fight that, and you, you should think about your religion. <coughs> uh, brothers and sisters, this is the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. Alhamdulillah, we started last year, in Ramadan, I think more than 80 lectures in Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, يعني, alhamdulillah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped us to finish this surah and alhamdulillah this is the second time uh, we did surah al-Baqarah maybe uh, uh, 10 years back or, or sorry 8 years back uh, it was also about 50 lectures 50 lectures or something between 50 and 60 lectures and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to continue uh, until we finish the Quran uh, but I need your help brothers and sisters uh, to attend with me and, uh, and you know it is easy and also it is difficult I mean the online attendance it is easy if you are in Kuwait you are outside Kuwait you are at work not okay it is easy and it is difficult you know that when when I watch something online by the mobile okay it will not be attractive like the physical attendance okay so uh, yani I need your cooperation with me yani, uh, one of the brothers said Khalas, yani, no need to do the live I can film the lectures then I can upload this on uh, YouTube but I don't like this idea. It's Allah khair for this idea, but I don't like this idea. Why? Because I want the environment of the lecture. And maybe, maybe inshallah, next week we can start this lecture in the masjid as usual. And uh, we can tell maybe only a few brothers to attend, maybe four or five brothers, or maybe only the vaccinated brothers to attend the lecture in the masjid. And, uh, yani, uh, try your best to share the video, to share the khair. This will be helpful for me and for you, inshallah, for, for the Muslims. Tayyib, so I stop here. Zakim Allah khair. Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept from us the tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay.